take a moment to make sure that you have a block nearby or something that you can use that's similar to a block, just in case you'd like to bring the floor a little bit closer to you in some of the poses that we'll be doing in this class. When you're ready, find yourself into a comfortable seated position. Feet should be firmly planted on the floor, about hip width apart, and your back should rest comfortably upright. So without too much strain, if you'd like, you can find some support against the backrest, but find a way so that you can feel nice and tall in your chair without feeling like you're working too hard to maintain that position. Hands can come to rest in your lap or at your sides, whatever feels best in your body, and then either close your eyes or just soften your gaze so you're not focused on anything in particular, usually a spot on the floor works, whatever feels best, and bring your awareness to your breath. So simply starting to slow the breathing down a little bit here. We're not doing anything to change it dramatically quite yet, but simply noticing how the air feels as it moves in through your body and out of your body. Taking a couple of rounds, just letting the inhalations and exhalations happen on their own. See if you can follow two full rounds of breath from the start of the inhale all the way through to the end of the exhale. And then on your next inhale, start to reach the top of your head up towards the ceiling, feeling your body growing long as your breath also grows long. Letting the exhale happen on its own. Inhaling to work up towards your comfortable maximum inhale. So you can take a few breaths to get there. You don't have to get your full deep inhale on the first try. But simply working towards whatever is your comfortable maximum meaning there should be no strain into the neck, the back, the chest, or the shoulders. And then at the end of your next exhale, let the inhale just happen on its own. And then start to bring your awareness to your exhales, drawing them out just a little bit longer each time around. Maybe you breathe out through your nose or your mouth, whatever is more comfortable but usually breathing out through your mouth allows for a slightly longer and therefore slightly deeper exhale. So you're working towards whatever is your most comfortable level of empty on your exhales. So the deeper you breathe out, the more the diaphragm will move up and press all of that stale air out of the bases of the lungs. This becomes extremely important or more important than usual around this time of year when those nasty bugs like to crawl in and hide at the bases of the lungs and develop into something less than pleasant. If you'd like to deepen your exhales even more, you might want to take a moment to blow out through pursed lips. So think back to blowing bubbles in your milk with a straw when you were a kid. Or blowing out a candle at a longer distance. That really helps to get the air pockets moving down into the lower lobes of the lungs, getting things moving. All right, finish whatever round of breath you're on. Let your breath return to normal and take two breaths. Once again, following the inhale all the way in and the exhale all the way out. Last full breath, deep breath in, full breath out. And if your eyes are closed, gently let your lids flutter open letting your eyes become accustomed to the light. And if your hands are not already at your sides, let them come down to your sides now, finding seated mountain pose. On an inhale, reach the top of your head up towards the ceiling at the same time that you reach the two fingertips that are at the center of your hand towards the floor. So as you inhale, find length in your spine by pressing down through your feet and your fingers at the same time that you press up through the top of your head. As you exhale, feel your hips sinking deeper into your chair, the soles of your feet sinking into the floor, into your mat. Take two breaths again. Inhale, reach down to rise up. You can think of this as potted plant pose where you're rooting down to rise up out of your seat. Exhale, feel the weight of your legs and hips sinking into your chair, your feet into the floor below you. On your next inhale, once again, reach up. And as you exhale, gently let your chin come down towards your chest. On the inhale, gently roll up to bring your gaze up and over your right shoulder. Pause at the top. 
And then on your exhale, let your head roll back down towards your chest. Pause here at the bottom, just so momentum doesn't take over. Inhale, look up to the left. Coming up as far as you comfortably can without bringing your head into extension. So keep a level gaze over that left shoulder. Exhale to roll down. Pause at the bottom. So we'll do at least three rounds to each side. You can move with your own breath, inhaling to come up and exhaling to roll down. Don't forget those pauses between each inhale and each exhale. That allows us to carry out the movement safely. Your neck is comprised of a lot of vulnerable joints, so you want to be very kind to it as you're warming it up in these early stages. Pause at the bottom. We'll take one more round each side. Inhale, everybody look right. And exhale, roll back down. Pause at the bottom. Last one. Inhale, everybody look to your left. Exhale, roll back down, and this time pause at the bottom. As you inhale, slowly come back up to center, one bone at a time, vertebra by vertebra, brick by brick, to a straight spine. Exhale, find your mountain pose. Good. Coming into a shoulder warm-up now, so you might want to wiggle into your shoulders a little bit, find a little bit of range of motion, and as you're ready, pay attention to your shoulders. Inhale, sweep your arms up. If it's not comfortable for you to come all the way up, only come up as far as is comfortable. Exhale, hands come down to heart center. Now, option here to just continue on your inhale, coming back all the way up, and exhale to come all the way down. I'll demonstrate the next round, coming through the full range of motion. Inhale to come up. As you exhale, hands come down through heart center. As you come through heart center, interlace your fingers, Press down. Inhale, reach up. Really stretch out through the shoulder blades at the back. Send your fingertips up. You might even fall with your gaze. And as you exhale, let your arms come down slower than you want them to, as if there's giant balloons deflating underneath them. We'll do two more rounds just like that. Inhale, rise up. Again, you might bring your arms to the front of you for a variation of this pose or the sequence if it's not comfortable to come all the way up. Listen to your body, exhale to press down, inhale to scoop out, round out through your shoulders, really send your spine back between your shoulder blades, look up as your hands pass overhead, and then exhale slowly, slower than you want to, lower your shoulders, lower your arms. Last round, inhale, sweep your arms up, exhale, hands come down through heart center, interlace your fingers, press down, Inhale, reach forward and up, stretch all the way up, and exhale, let your arms float all the way down. Maybe wiggle things out as they land, preparing to come into the side bend. Sweep your arms up. As you exhale, let that right arm come down. It should just hang heavy for the first round. As you inhale, reach your left fingertips up and out as you send that left hip over to the left side. So you're still keeping lots of length through the right side of the body. You're simply finding greater length in the left. So be mindful not to crunch. You don't want to sink your lower ribs towards your hip. Inhale, sweep that right arm up. Exhale, left arm comes down, hangs heavy. Inhale, reach up and over towards the left side with your right fingertips as you send your right hip towards the right wall. Inhale, reach that left arm up to meet the right. As you exhale, right arm comes down. Option just to repeat the earlier sets that we did before, or maybe you wanna open up a little bit more through your shoulder, in which case you bring the palm towards the front of the room. Inhale, sweep that right arm up. Exhale, left arm down. Inhale, reach, and once again, option to bend through the elbow, setting the palm forward, finding a slightly wider opening of that shoulder girdle. Inhale, come up. Exhale, right hand comes down. This time, if it feels good, you might find a spot on the side of the chair frame to send a little bit of pressure through. So don't bounce the way I'm doing it now. I'm just demonstrating the movement. Hand comes into the frame or the seat of the chair. Press your left hip over and send that energy right up towards your left shoulder. Exhale, let that left arm come down. Inhale, right arm up as that left hand finds a spot on the chair frame. The movement is again, the direction of movement up through your right shoulder, opening up through the right side body. Be mindful to maintain lots of length in your left side and make sure that both hip bones stay rooted to your seat. 
Inhale, bring your arms up. Option one for a twist is what we call around the world. So gently turning towards your right side, letting both arms come down to the side of the chair, and then gently bending, just like you're looking to see if there's something underneath the chair that's of interest. Inhale, sweep your arms up. As you exhale, start to fold gently over your right thigh. So hands can come down to the floor, but if that's intense at this point in the practice, hands can stay up on your thigh. Inhale, sweep your arms up. This time, as you come down, reach as far forward as you can without lifting your hips up off your chair and let yourself forward fold over your thighs right in the center. Inhale, reach up. Gentle turn to come down over that left thigh. Again, option to have hands on the floor or hands just above your knee, whatever feels best at this point. Last one, inhale all the way up. As you exhale, turn to your left, arms come down and gently bend to see what you see on the other side of the chair. Second option, you can do around the world or you can do this variation, which is when your left hand comes to the outer edge of your right thigh, right arm comes down behind the backrest. Inhale first for length and then as you exhale, that left hand is decoration only. Turn your body to look towards the right side. As you inhale, Keep sending the top of your head up towards the ceiling. As you exhale, breathe out, letting your body ease into the twist. Once again, be mindful. We're not pressing into that left hand to yank ourselves into the twist. It's a gentle easing with each breath. Inhale, sweep your arms up and through center. As you exhale, right hand comes to the outside of the left thigh. Left arm comes down behind the backrest. Inhale, reach up. Once again, right hand is decoration only. Exhale, turn to your left. Inhale for length. Exhale, squeeze the air out, ease into the twist. Again, my hands are doing nothing to pull me or to yank me or to wrench me into that twist. It's whatever the muscles around your trunk feel like they're up to this morning. Inhale, sweep your arms all the way up. Exhale, hands come down to your knees, making our way into seated cat-cow. On the inhale, rock your body forward over your hips. Shoulders creep down and away from the ears. Squeeze your shoulder blades together and down your back. Gazes to the center of the room. As you exhale, you can put a little bit of gentle pressure into your hands. Rock yourself back. Draw your chin down towards your chest, rounding out to the backside body. Inhale, rock yourself forward and through. Gaze comes up, shoulder blades are down. Tailbone legs up behind you. Exhale, start to rock yourself back. Your belly button draws in towards your spine, scooping out the front side of the body. Inhale, rock yourself forward. Gaze comes up, shoulders away from the ears. But as you exhale, shoulders will start to rise as your chin dips towards your chest. Tailbone tucks under as if your tail would come through between your knees. Inhale, two more rounds, rock yourself forward. Gaze comes up, shoulders drop. Exhale, rock yourself back. Last round. Inhale, draw yourself forward, lift your gaze, drop your shoulders, squeeze open your chest, exhale, round out, send your spine back between the shoulder blades, drop your chin towards your chest, really round out to the back side of the body, then inhale back to a straight spine, moving into hip circles. As you exhale, start to send yourself back once again into the cat variation of the cat cow pose. Inhale, start to rock yourself forward as you circle around that right thigh. Pause at the top of the circle, cow pose. Shoulder blades are once again down and away, so you should recognize these two postures from the last sequence. As you exhale, work your way back around that left thigh, making your way back into cat. Option to make this a more fluid set of movements, coming around in a full circle as you go, or Option if you get a little bit confused or get a little carried away, pausing in cat at the back, inhaling to pause at the top of the circle in cow. Whatever you do, try to get your neck to play around and play along in these poses. That's why it's important to bring the gaze up and to bring the gaze down as you come through the front and the back of the circles, just so that the neck gets to get warmed up as well as the rest of the spine. Last one, we started in an exhale, so we're going to finish in an exhale. Round out, inhale back to center. 
exhale, find your mountain, reset. We're going to come to the opposite side. So this time, inhale, rock your body forward, coming into cow pose. As you exhale, going right again, but it will be the opposite direction this time. As you exhale, back to a cat pose, drop your chin. Inhale, draw your body forward and through. Once again, coming to a cat and cow at the top and bottom of your circles. Making sure that the chin comes up and down as you go. Always an option to pause at the top, finding your cow. Inhale, gaze comes up. Exhale, rounding out. Pausing at the back, chin comes down, cat pose. Making sure that as you make your circles, both hip bones stay rooted to your seat, that you're not lifting one leg up off the chair as you come through the back of the circle or far side. And we start in an inhale, so we will finish in an inhale, and as you exhale, gently release up to mountain. Hands come back to your sides. Please feel free to take a drink of water anytime you need and we'll prepare to move into our sun salutations. So once again, meeting back in mountain pose. Take a deep breath in, reach the top of the head up towards the ceiling, send your fingertips down towards the floor as if they were growing roots or dropping anchor right from those two middle fingers. On your next inhale, sweep your arms forward and up. As you exhale, reach your fingertips forward, stretch as far as you can, and then gently, slowly start to lower yourself down over your thighs. These are the sun salutations where you may wish to have yourself a block so that when we come into the forward fold portions of the sun salutations, if the floor seems like it's a very long way away, the block help brings, helps to bring up that floor towards your hands. On your next inhale, come halfway up. So in our variation, we learned forearms to thighs, gaze comes up. The important part is that your shoulders drop away just like in cow pose coming into Sphinx Pose. Exhale to fold over your arms. Your gaze comes down between your knees. Inhale, rock yourself forward and up, keeping your shoulders away from your ears, but just sending a slight back bend into the upper back, Cobra Pose. Exhale, hands come down between the feet. Feet separate about hip width or just a little wider. Keep your hips firmly rooted to your seat so you may wish to have a block here. Let your head hang heavy. Downward facing dog. We'll take two full breaths here. Inhale as deeply as you can. Exhale, let everything go. Do that one more time. Deep breath in, full breath out. On your next inhale, use your hands to walk yourself all the way up. Exhale, find your way back into mountain pose. Take a breath here. As you're ready, moving into the second round of sun salutations. Inhale, sweep your arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Moving a little faster this time. Inhale, halfway up, sphinx pose. Exhale, fold over your arms. Inhale, rock your body forward and through, cobra. Exhale, hands come down, feet are wide. Head is heavy, downward facing dog. On your next inhale, use your hands to walk yourself all the way up. Exhale, find your mountain. Let the flush happen from the inversion. And then we'll do one last round. Inhale, sweep your arms up. Exhale, hinge of the hips, forward fold. Inhale, halfway up to your straight spine. Sphinx pose. Exhale, fold over your arms. Inhale, rock your body forward and through. Cobra pose. Exhale, hands to the block or the floor, head hangs heavy, downward facing dog. Deep breath in, full breath out. Use your hands, inhale, walk yourself all the way up. If you have a block, gently place it out of the way, setting up for low lunge or runner's pose. So making your way over to the side, the right side of your chair, letting that left thigh stay directly in center, it will be very different for people as to what is the most comfortable position for your right leg in this pose. So make sure you pay attention. It can vary from leg to leg. It can vary from person to person. It can even vary from day to day. So really listen to your body and decide which variation of this pose is best for you. Most important thing before you set up that right leg, left hand finds an anchor either on the side of the chair or the seat. Start to gently slide that right leg back. Options are 
up on the ball of the foot. If you have access, you can flip your foot right over so that the top of the foot comes to the mat. And if you have access to your foot, option to hang onto the foot, pressing the foot back into the hand as you do so. So it's not just a passive movement. Your foot is actively kicking into your hand if you have this grip. Those of you who do not have hold of your foot, I will demonstrate a variation of runner's pose. So inhaling, sweeping that right arm up. As you exhale, gently start to reach over and send your right hip right. So think back to the side bends from the beginning of class. It's less of a crunching into your left side, more of a sending your right hip to the right side. Inhale, reach up. As you exhale, lower your right arm, release your right foot. Take a moment, always in mountain pose, reset. Make sure you're not moving directly from one side pose to another side pose without taking a moment to reset your hips, reset your shoulders. It's really good for your spine to find that intermediary position first. Then as you're ready, setting up for runner's pose or low lunge on the left. Left foot comes out to the side, right leg stays directly in front with your knee stacked over your ankle. Once again, decide what position feels best for you on the ball of the foot, the top of the foot, or foot in hand. If you don't have hold of your foot, option to come into runner's pose. If you do have hold of your foot, please keep that right hand rooted down. Do not try to lift the right hand instead of the left. You will end up on the floor pretty quickly and that's not the goal of this particular chair yoga class. If you do not have hold of your foot, you can inhale that left arm up. And as you exhale, reach towards the right corner of the room as you send your left hip left. Again, we're not looking to collapse through the right side. We're looking to open up through the left. Inhale, arm comes back to straight position. Exhale to lower the left arm and release the left leg. Find your way back into mountain pose. Feet firmly planted on the mat. Take a breath here. Moving into our chair sequence. Chair sequence and chair yoga. On the inhale, sweep your arms forward and up. As you exhale, start to lower your arms so that your palms are down, stopping when you reach shoulder height. Fingers are spread wide and with energy in them. So it's not a passive, my arms are hanging out here. It's like we're trying to send laser beams out through the tips of our fingers to zap someone in front of us. Option to come up onto the balls of the feet for a little bit of extra energy through the legs. If you come up on the balls, draw the foot a little bit closer to your chair. That will give you a little bit more leverage as the ball of the foot should be directly under your knee. Option to work just with your fists and fingers here. So on the inhale, reach out as you exhale, ball your fists in together. On the inhale, release the fingers out. If you'd like to up the ante a little bit, on the exhale, ball your hands into fists, pull back, squeeze your shoulder blades together. Inhale, stretch your fingers wide as if you're sliding your arms across a slippery surface. Exhale, ball your hands into fists, pull back, squeeze your shoulder blades together. We're going for three more. Remember, always an option just to work with the hands. But if you're ready, finish your exhale with your elbows at shoulder height. Shoulder blades squeeze together. Two more. Inhale, reach out. Exhale, ball your fists up. Pull back if that feels good to you. Last one. Inhale, reach. Exhale, ball your fists up. Pull back only if that feels good. And then inhale, reach all the way forward. Exhale, press into the feet. Press, press, press. Reach, reach, reach. And then exhale, let your hands come to your lap. Feet relax to the floor. As you're ready. Inhale, nose over toes, everybody up. Exhale, please feel free to use your hands to find your seat on the way down. But inhale, everyone up. Safety first, always with this exercise. Make sure you know where your chair is and please do not ever use a chair with wheels for your chair yoga. Exhale down, we're going for two more. Inhale, nose over toes. Exhale, have a seat. Last one, inhale, nose over toes. Exhale, have a seat. And anyone who's ever taken a class in chair yoga with me knows that I love an extra stir boost up on your toes, reach for the ceiling, stretch, stretch, stretch. Take up as much space as you can. Exhale, gently and calmly return to your seat. Take a moment in mountain pose. Setting up for our first sequence, 
going to the left to begin with today. Sending your left thigh over the left side of the chair, setting up for a high lunge. So turn your entire body so that it's facing the left side wall. Knee should be over ankle or slightly behind it. You just don't want the ankle to be behind the knee. Just like we did with low lunge or runner's pose. Right foot can either stay up on the ball or it can flip and slide slightly back, staying on the top of the foot, whatever feels best in your body. Set your legs up first. Make sure that you are comfortable wherever you are before you start to move into the upper portion of the sequence. When you're ready, on the inhale, sweep your arms up. As you exhale, hinge at the waist just a little bit, drawing your belly button in towards your spine as you sweep your arms back. You can come around the back of the seat if you like. Inhale, rock yourself up, crescent lunge. Exhale, top of the tree. Draw your gaze over the left foot as you come down. Inhale, draw yourself up. As you exhale, don't forget to draw that belly button in. It's not a relaxing pose. We're not collapsing down onto our leg. You're keeping your body elevated, engaging the core. Inhale, reach all the way up. Exhale, hands come down to the knee. Gently release that right leg, turning your body, finding your mountain pose, and take a breath here once again before finding your way onto the right side. When you're ready, we'll head right. So right thigh comes and you turn your entire body to face the right side wall this time. Left foot gets set up once the right knee is stacked directly over the right ankle. Once again, option to stay up on the ball of the foot or flip the foot over and find any distance that is comfortable to you. You can take a different variation on each side. It doesn't have to be the same. Very often we have very different stories in one lower extremity compared to the other. If you've had a surgery or an injury of any kind, one side will probably be very different from the other. So play around with what feels best until you know. Inhale, sweep your arms up, crescent lunge. As you exhale, hinge at the hips, draw your belly button in, engage the core, look over your right foot, send your shoulders away from your ears. Inhale, sweep yourself up, let your shoulder blades rise. It's okay for your shoulders to come up to your ears as you come up into crescent. Exhale, reach as far forward with your fingertips as you can, keeping your body elevated off the thigh or at least engaged. Inhale, sweep yourself up, last round. Exhale, hinge. Draw the top of your head as far forward as you can. It's like we're coming into a one-sided skier's pose. Inhale, sweep your arms up. Exhale, hands to your knee. Release the left leg and find your mountain pose. Take a breath here before setting up for our Dancing Warrior sequence. One of my favorite of all times. It's a full body workout. We'll go left to begin with once again, setting the left knee over the left ankle. Body faces the left side wall. Right leg can straighten out any amount. So this is the difference between last round's high lunge pose and this round's warrior two pose. Option to lift your toes off the floor. You can have your knee as bent as you'd like it to be, whatever feels good. Just be mindful that your knee doesn't clunk home. So make sure you have at least the ability to bend it once it's straight. When you're ready, bring your gaze over the left leg. Inhale, sweep the left arm over the left thigh. Right arm floats out behind. As you exhale, keep your hands where they are. Drop your shoulders away from your ears. Inhale to reach. As you exhale, sweep your right hand, the back of that right hand, behind your low back. Flip the palm of the left hand. Inhale or reach up and back. Exalted warrior. Exhale, release that left hand back down in front. Release the right arm out. Inhale to reach. As you exhale, bend your left elbow. Place the forearm down on your left thigh, flip the palm of the right hand. Inhale, reach up and over, side angle. Exhale here. Inhale, sweep your right arm back, left arm will float up. Exhale, hands stay put, shoulders drop. Gaze comes over the middle finger of the left hand. Inhale to reach. Exhale, let your arms float down, bend your knees. Come back to center, find your mountain pose. Take a breath here. When you're ready, setting up on the right side. So once again, right knee over right ankle. Entire body faces the right side wall. Left leg sets up so that it's straightened any amount and anywhere, any position that feels good in any arc. Make sure your lower body is stable and you're comfortable. Always an option to lift your toes if that feels good, but be careful once again about that left knee. Inhale, sweep the right arm over the right thigh. Left arm floats out behind you. 
As you exhale, keep your hands where they are, drop your shoulders away from your ears. Inhale to reach. As you exhale, back of the left hand comes to your lower back. Flip the palm of the right hand. Inhale, reach up and back. Exalted warrior. Exhale, back to warrior two. Inhale to reach. As you exhale, bend your right elbow. Place that forearm down on your right thigh. Flip the palm of the left hand. Inhale, reach up and over. Side angle. Inhale to reach. Exhale to sink. Inhale, let your left arm lead the movement as your right arm follows. Exhale, drop your shoulders while keeping your hands where they are. Inhale to reach. Exhale, find your mountain pose. Take your time. Make your way back to center. Take a breath in mountain pose. We'll move into our goddess sequence. So feet are about hip width apart. If your mat is lengthwise under your chair, it should be about mat width apart. You might be a little wider, or a little narrower, whatever feels best in your body. But once again, set yourself up so that your knees are about stacked on top of your ankles. You just don't want them in front of your ankles. That's not a stable position and it makes your knees incredibly vulnerable, especially on the insides. So slide your feet out any amount so that you feel comfortable. And then as you're ready, on the inhale, reach the left arm up. Exhale back. Inhale, right arm up. Exhale back. Once again, it's a slight side bend on the inhale, but we're maintaining length in both sides. So inhale, reach, don't collapse. Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down. Last one. Inhale right. Exhale down. Coming into fists of fire, one of my favorite poses or sequences. As you're ready, inhale, reach your arms up. As you exhale, exhale everything out. Inhale up. Exhale. We're going for six. Two more. Nice. Inhale, sweep your arms up. As you exhale, hinge at the hips. Hands come down to the mat or the floor. Once again, it might be nice to have your block here so that you can bring the floor up to you a little bit if it's not comfortable down on the floor or the mat. As you're ready, Inhale, sweep your right arm up any amount. So if this is too intense in your shoulder or upper back, exhale down. Option to bring your arm straight forward instead. Exhale down for any range in between, anywhere here, whatever feels best. Exhale down. Inhale left. Gaze can follow the hand or can stay down at your block or your hand, on whatever's on the floor. Last round, inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up, exhale down, and just like in standing, my favorite pose in chair yoga, inhale, start pose, arms are wide, legs are straight, reach up, reach out, exhale, mountain pose. Take a breath here, we're going to move into our standing sequence. Taking your chair to the top of your mat, so if your mat is lengthwise, make sure that you've got the back of the chair at your disposal. You may wish to have your block just on the front. If you are using a folding chair, please make sure your block is at the very front of the seat so that you don't put your pressure on the back of the seat. It will collapse. We're moving into our warrior three. I will demonstrate an option for revolved half moon as well. But to begin with, coming into our warm ups, making sure we activate the glute max so Looking down to your feet, hands on the back of the chair for support, bringing your weight into your right foot. Inhale, sweep that left leg back. It's not a very big movement. Exhale back. Hand can come to the glute if you'd like to make sure it's the glute that's doing the work and not the quadratus lumborum, which is that square muscle right above. So again, if it's just coming from the glute, it's a very slight movement back. You'll know you've come too far if you lift up and all of a sudden it feels like your back is starting to arch. Toes should both be facing the back of the chair and not splayed out so that they're like duck feet. As you're ready, coming into warrior three, bring your weight back into that right foot, engage the left like we did in our warm up. Now start to hinge. So hands stay on the back of the chair to begin with. Keeping your body in one straight line from the top of your head to the heel of the left foot Come down any amount. 
This is a perfectly valid variation of warrior three. As long as you're straight, you're doing this perfectly well. If you'd like to come down a little bit deeper, option to come to the block or even the seat of the chair. Keep rotating that left hip down. So you don't want the left leg to come up. Keep rotating it down. It's almost as if you're trying to use your left big toe to point towards that right calf. Option to stay right where you are or maybe you'd like to come into a balancing version and lift that right arm up. If your right arm comes up, your fingers are spread wide, thumb is up, gaze stays down at the block, heel is pressing out towards the back wall, which used to be our left wall. And then to come out of this pose, if your arm is out, keep it up as you rise up, inhale, come all the way up, exhale, find your mountain, wiggle everything out, coming into warrior three on the opposite side. So hands can come back to the chair to warm up the right side, or your hand can come to rest on your glute max. It's okay, you can touch your own bum, it's all right. It's allowed. Look down to make sure both sets of feet are pointing towards the back of the chair. As you're ready, engage the glute. Inhale, send your right heel back, exhale back. Again, it's not a very big movement, just enough to activate the glute maximus and not take the movement so far that it's arching the back on that side, which will engage the, glute, the quadratus lumborum, which is already overworked in most people. Last one, glute only, exhale back. Wiggle out if you need to wiggle. And then as you're ready, weight comes back into your left foot, hands start on the back of the chair. Engage that right foot by engaging the glute, and then begin to hinge. So keep pressing into your left foot to stay long. You're not collapsing into your hip but keep a slight bendability in that knee as well. Hands can start to work your way down anywhere that's comfortable. Keep rotating that right hip down so that you're not splaying out to the side. You want your hips to be level, almost as if you could balance something on your lower back without it falling off. So option to stay right where you are and keep working on extending out through that right leg, or maybe you want to come into a balancing version, revolve half moon, left hand comes out, Fingers are splayed wide, thumb is up, gaze stays down. I'll move the block because that won't stay. And then as you're ready, if your arm is up, keep it up as you come up, one straight line. Exhale, find your mountain pose, wiggle everything out. Coming into our standing version of the open hip poses. So warrior three and revolved half moon are closed hip, your hips are in the same direction. This time we're gonna come into one of three variations of an open hip pose in standing. So the same warm-up goes for all three of these exercises. So find your weight into your right foot, right hand is on the back of the chair. Leading with the outer edge of the left foot, now we're working the glute medius. So on the inhale, leg sweeps up, leg sweeps back on the exhale. So you can make this as easy or as difficult as you like. You can try to imagine that you're pressing out through molasses or through snow, something that's heavy, and exhaling back. Again, hand can come to that glute medius. As soon as you start to feel it, Travel up into so you want to make sure you're not sending your toes out to two to eleven o'clock on this side. Toes need to stay at twelve o'clock. If they are having a tendency to start to come out this way, you can exaggerate and point your toes back in towards your standing leg. Wiggle everything out. I will demonstrate tree, padakustasana, and half moon. Your choice. No need to do all three of these poses as they all have very similar effects. You can change it up a little bit from day to day, whatever feels best. Coming into tree pose first. Starting with your weight in the right foot, hand can stay on the back of the chair for balance. Coming up on your toes on the left foot, letting your heel rest on the inner ankle if you'd like, or option to move your foot up to the inside of your calf muscle. Make sure you are not encroaching on that knee. It's very tempting to put the foot there because it rests so nicely, but it can do damage to your standing leg. So. Foot can come to rest either toes on the floor or whole foot on the calf. Work at growing tall out of that right hip as you inhale. Option to keep your hands on the back of the chair if you'd like to work on your balance, maybe try lifting a finger or just keeping one little finger on there. You'd be surprised at how much of a difference that can make that little finger. Otherwise, option to bring your hands to heart center. As you inhale, you're sending the top of your head up towards the ceiling while you're rooting down to that right foot. As you exhale, Press your left foot 
into your right leg. Press your right leg back into your left foot so it's an equal and opposite reaction. See, everybody wobbles and tree. Last full breath here. As you exhale, release your foot down to the floor. Option to turn around and do that on the other side right away, or other options are Padagustasana. So on the inhale, reach up through the top of your head, reach down through your right foot. As you exhale, bend your left knee. Flex your left foot 90 degrees for both of these. Option to stay here, or you can start to bring your left leg out to the side. The amount that it comes out to the side is dictated by the shape of your hip joint. So hips need to both stay facing forward. That hip only goes out as far as it can manage without bringing a twist into your pelvis. As soon as that pelvis starts to travel, the twist is coming up into your lumbar spine and that's a no-no. Hand can come to rest on the knee. And if you want to test your balance, you can either leave it here and play with taking a finger or two off or option to bring your right hand straight out to the side, thumb is up. And if you really are feeling lucky, you can bring your gaze over that right thumb. Inhale to reach out wherever you are. If you're out to the side, as you exhale, bring everything back to center. And then inhale for length. Exhale, back down to the mat. Wiggle things out. Third and final option for an open hip pose on this side. Bring your body back to the chair so that you're facing the chair to start. Weight is still in your right foot. It begins very much like warrior three. So on the inhale, left leg comes back. Now, the difference here is that we rotate the foot so that it's pointing to nine o'clock on a, um, an analog clock. Heel or arch stays behind the, left, the right standing leg. Start to lower that right hand down towards the seat of the chair as your left foot floats up. So you're in one straight line. It's like you're between two panes of glass. You may wish to keep your hand on the block for this one. You can work on your balance if you like. I'm just gonna move this block out of the way because I prefer to have my hand on the seat. So left hand can stay here, or if you'd like to challenge your balance, reach that left hand up towards the ceiling. Once again, fingers are spread wide. It creates an energy. It gives you more balance by contracting. Inhale one more time. As you exhale, start to lower that hand first to the back of the seat. Rotate the toes as you rotate your hip, and then Foot comes down, hand comes up, roll up, one vertebra at a time. Exhale into mountain pose. Take the time to do whichever of those three poses that you prefer or that you started with today on the other side before continuing with the rest of the seated poses. When you've done that, bring your chair back to the center of your mat and find yourself back in a comfortable seated position and find your mountain pose. Take a breath here. Moving into the core workout. So my favorite pose, if you've ever taken a class of any kind with me, you'll know that I'm a firm believer that everything starts with the core. So strong core means we have a healthy back for life. Take a deep breath in. We're going to come into option one, which is boat pose. We have a few variations of things that you can do to play it up a little bit in boat. So scoot yourself forward a little bit on your chair so that you have a little bit of room to play and to get back to the backrest. You'll want this for one of the variations of boat. When you come into boat, knees should be about hip width apart. Come up to begin with on your toes. This may be your variation of boat and that's perfectly okay. If your belly button is engaged and you're trying to lift your legs up off the floor, this is boat pose. You may wish to lean back against the seat rest to provide a little bit of support. You may wish to have one hand under each thigh or you may wish to challenge your balance a little bit and let everything float out to the side. I'm gonna scoot myself forward just a little bit more here, just to give you a variation. Okay, one foot might be higher than the other. You might not be able to sit with both feet this high up, that's okay. Just the movement of keeping the belly button sent back towards the spine and lifting the legs is perfectly valid to make this a boat pose. Option to row your boat by sending your feet out towards the floor. Exhale, come all the way back in. Inhale, reach, exhale back. This is rowing your boat, inhale out, exhale back. Two more, inhale out, exhale back. Last one, inhale out, exhale back. And it's perfectly okay if your boat sinks at any point. It happens to me all the time. Other option, in boat, inhale to reach, use your oars. 
exhale over, inhale up, exhale over, inhale up. This gets the obliques. Exhale. One more to each side. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Return your feet to the floor slowly and comfortably. Find yourself back in mountain pose. If you're not feeling boat, and I don't blame you, I have a love-hate relationship with that pose. It's incredibly good for your core. Not always the most fun sensation in the body. Other option is to do yoga with bicycle. So if we do that, identify your right hand and your left foot. Inhale, reach that right arm up towards the ceiling. Extend the left foot straight out behind. As you exhale, bring your elbow to your knee. Inhale. Exhale. Option to come into any range. So I might just bring my elbow down. Might bring my knee up any amount. Exhale. Inhale up. Exhale everything down. Again, belly button draws in towards the spine. Each, each time you exhale, that draws and tightens your core muscles in. Inhale, left arm up, right leg out. Exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale. Exhale, really tighten the core. Inhale. Exhale, you should feel like someone could knock you one in the stomach and you'd still be okay. Last set. Exhale, inhale all the way up. Exhale, come all the way back down. Feet come to the floor. Take a breath here. Exhale. Setting up for sail pose. So take your hands. Find any place near the back of your chair that you can anchor your hands. So for some of you, it might be the legs, it might be the sides here, it might be the actual back of the seat. Inhale to find length in your spine. As you exhale, squeeze your shoulder blades together. And drop your shoulder blades down towards your tailbone. So you're really opening up to the chest. And as you inhale, draw your body away from your arms so you're setting sail. Gaze stays to the center. So your chin actually feels like it's getting closer to your chest, but it's not. It's staying up and elevated without bringing your gaze up towards the ceiling. Keep your eyes level. As you exhale, gently release the pose, release your grip, and maybe come into a gentle cat just for a little bit of a counter stretch. Inhale, back to mountain pose. Exhale, find your mountain. Fingers plant down towards the floor. You can do that pose anywhere from one to three repetitions, depending on how much of a back bend feels good. But you usually want to follow some of that core work with a gentle back bend just to open it to counter pose. It's very good for the spine to feel that relaxation and that compression at the same time in different curves. And then making our way into our cool down. So take a moment, take a breath in mountain, and we'll set up for eagle. So for eagle, option to cross your legs to start, right leg over left. Please do not do this portion of the pose if you've had hip replacements in particular, or if this just doesn't feel comfortable for any reason. Inhale, sweep your arms up. Right leg is crossed, so right elbow comes under left. You're aiming to be as close to your elbows as you can. Not everybody is shaped to accomplish that, that's okay. You're just aiming for it as close as possible. Lots of options. Maybe give yourself the hug variation. Maybe you have a little more room to play. Hands can come back to back or palm to palm. Whatever variation you're in, elbows come up on the inhale. And then as you exhale, gently start to fold. We're not crunching, it's not abdominal work. We're letting our head hang heavy. This is a very slow movement to allow for an opening, a deep opening between the shoulder blades. Coming into a gentle eagle stretch. On an inhale, roll up slowly, one vertebra at a time, brick by brick, all the way up. Exhale to slowly unwind, uncross your leg. Find mountain pose. Take a breath. And as you're ready, bring that left leg over only if this is a good idea for you. Inhale, sweep your arms up. As you exhale, left elbow under right. Once again, hug variation, back to back, palm to palm, whatever feels best in your body. And it might not be the same variation from one side to the other. Inhale, elbows up to shoulder. Exhale, head hangs heavy. Start to lower down. Once again, it's not a crunch. There's no active contraction of the abdominal muscles. 
is just a gentle lowering. So it's an eccentric contraction of your back musculature. Breath here. Inhale, brick by brick, bone by bone. One vertebra at a time, all the way up. Exhale, release your arms, release your foot. Find your mountain pose. Take a breath here. Exhale. Coming into our cool down poses. Right leg, if it's comfortable, right ankle comes to left knee. If that feels good. Otherwise, coming into the brick variation on any height. So you can have a bunch of things around the house. If you don't have a block, you can have a bunch of books, anything that can bring a different level. The higher your foot, the more intense the stretch will be into your hip. If you can comfortably get the outside of your right ankle to your right to your left knee, flex your foot. Wherever you land, you should be on the outer blade of your foot. Toe should be flexed back towards your shin. Take a breath here. As you exhale, check in with your right hip. If you're already feeling a lot of sensation in that hip, stay where you are. Otherwise, you can start to hinge. Make sure you're not rounding out through your spine in this pose. It's a gentle hinging at the hips. So your gaze always stays as far forward as you can comfortably manage, keeping your head stacked on top of your neck so that your shoulders are in one straight line. Everything is there. It's not rounded. Make sure both hip bones stay rooted to your seat. And then on your inhale, come up to a straight spine if you're not already here. Exhale to return that foot down to the floor. Inhale for length. As you exhale, left ankle sets up on the right knee. Again, option to use your block at any height or anything that you have lying around the house to create a slight adjustment to this pose if this is not comfortable. You should not feel any discomfort in your knee joint or your hip joint in this pose. Flex your toes in towards your shins. Hands come to rest on your leg or on both thighs if your foot is down a little lower. Inhale for length. Exhale, hinge only if that feels okay in your left hip. If your left hip is already singing, stop where you are and breathe. Gaze is just in front of your mat or a little bit ahead of your feet, depending on how you've set yourself up, which direction your mat runs. Last breath here. Inhale, straight spine. Exhale, foot to the floor. Find your mountain pose. Coming into knee to chest pose. So the last three poses are knee to chest, pigeon, and hamstring stretch. They can be done in any order. It doesn't make any difference. So whatever variation you're comfortable with, and you can do all three on one side and then all three on the other, or you can do as we're doing in this particular video, one at a time on each side. Makes no difference physiologically. It's whatever your body feels like it needs at that particular point in time. So on an inhale, find length. Once again, you may wish to scoot yourself forward if you'd like to lean back a little bit as you draw on the exhale, right knee up towards your chest. So hands can be interlaced around the knee or underneath it, depending on the history of that knee. If you've had surgery at all and you're not sure, hands are best under the knee. If you've got a healthy knee and it doesn't hurt to do this, a little compression to the knee joint is always a good thing and increases the circulation of the synovial fluid and really acts as a human's version of the Tin Man's oil can. Option to bring circles into your ankle. Don't be alarmed if you hear a lot of noises with this. Ankles are very musical joints. And go in the opposite direction if you went in one. As you exhale, you're squeezing the air out of your lower belly. Well, by moving your diaphragm up and out of the way, it creates real estate. So you don't have to use your hands to wrench that knee in closer. Work with your breath. Let your thigh ease its way up towards your chest. On the inhale, gently, slowly release the foot to the floor. Exhale, left knee into your chest. Once again, your choice. If you are not sure, don't risk it. Hands underneath the knee. Once again, if you did so on the other side, option to do circles with your foot. You can maybe write the alphabet, write your name. You can do whatever floats your boat. Get a little movement into that ankle joint. Go in the opposite direction if you've done circles. And then bring your awareness to your breath. So each exhale, squeezing the air out of the lower lobes of the lungs, getting that diaphragm out of the way. That helps to release the space and provide a little bit more movement. Let gravity do the work for you in this pose. Inhale, release your foot back to the mat. Exhale, find your mountain pose. For folding chairs, it's usually a little bit more comfortable to come into hamstring stretch. If you scoot yourself over to the side and do one leg at a time. So we'll set up for that variation today. 
keeping your left leg just slightly to the right of center. Again, just like we did with low lunge or runner's pose, you may wish to use your left hand to anchor yourself and then start to stretch that right leg out. Be careful. Your leg may want to hyperextend. It's okay if you move slowly, but you need to be able to bend it very easily. So if it clunks home and you're finding it difficult to get it to bend again, make sure you draw your foot back in a little bit more. You don't have to have a completely straight leg and there should be no strain down the back. Turn your gaze towards that right leg. Just as in pigeon, you might already be feeling sensation. Otherwise, option to hinge. You can keep hanging on if you'd like, keeping your body straight. If you're putting your hand down, it's for looks only. You're not putting any weight into your hand as you come into this pose because that will cause an increase of pressure and a tendency towards hyperextension. We don't want to do that. So if you're at all concerned, let that hand stay down. You can use a block if your hand doesn't comfortably come to the floor. And then inhale, come all the way up. I like to sweep my arm up if I've used it. Exhale, everything comes down. Take a moment as per usual in mountain pose. And then make your way over into hamstring stretch on the left side. So right leg is just to the left of center. Right hand roots down to the side. Inhale to stretch. So foot can stay straight or come up just like it does in warrior two, whatever feels best. Turn your body to face that left leg and then exhale to hinge any amount. You just want to feel a gentle opening through the back of that left leg without having the seat digging into your seat. So whatever feels best here. Again, totally good option for use a block right here if that feels better. It's much safer than putting your hand on your shin or on your thigh in this pose. Inhale, sweep your arms up. Exhale, bring yourself back to center. Take a moment and take a breath in mountains pose. Then inhale, last pose of the class. Reach up towards the ceiling as you exhale, hinge and fold. Coming into the forward fold of your choice. So options are to have your knees relatively close together. Maybe they're about hip width apart, that's child's pose. Or maybe they're mat width apart, a little bit wider than hip width. Coming into downward facing dog. Again, you can use a block to bring the floor or the mat up to you. Your head should be heavy in any of these poses. And you can play around to see where you like to have your legs positioned. The wider your feet, the more the stretch comes into your hip joints. The closer they are, the more you'll feel it into your lower back. Take a good three full breaths here. And then when you're ready, be absolutely mindful to use your hands to help roll yourself up. Find your mountain pose just long enough to let the flush happen. And then we'll come into a pranayama exercise, a breath work exercise to end the class. And I've chosen Kapabali breathing for today. Um, it's the skull shining breath. So you may feel a little bit of tingling in your face as you do this exercise. One hand can rest on your belly just so you get the feedback of what your diaphragm is doing. So in this exercise, you'll start by taking a deep breath in and then sharp little exhales, one after the other, letting the inhales happen on their own. So we'll do two rounds of 15, letting the air go completely as a slow, full exhale at the end of that 15. As you're ready, take a deep breath in. Exhale, here we go. Four, three, two, one. Take a couple of rounds of regular breath. And then as you're ready, inhale. Exhale, here we go, 15. Three, two, one. Find your hands into a comfortable position in your lap or at your sides. Feet should once again be about hip width apart. Firmly planted on the floor, but not too much strain. You might be resting once again against the back of the seat or you might just be comfortably seated so that your vertebrae naturally fall into the curves of the spine. Whatever position you choose here, you should not have to expend too much effort to maintain it. It should be a very comfortable, very relaxing position. Eyes can be closed, or if closed eyes is not really your comfortable zone, then keep them open, but keep your gaze on something like a spot 
in the woodwork on the floor or your tiles or whatever you have available to you, something that doesn't create too much of a draw on your focus. And bring your awareness back to your breath. Taking a few calming breaths here. Maybe breathing out through your mouth in a sigh, letting the practice go. Maybe taking a moment to expand your awareness to include your entire body, just checking in to see how things are feeling. This is not a time to pass judgment on whatever sensations arise, whatever you're feeling, whether it's physical, emotional, mental, whatever is going on with you is perfectly okay in this moment. You can handle it. The universe only gives us what we can handle at any moment in time. So see if you can just be okay with being at ease with whatever sensations are in your body. If the sensation is pain, however, please bring some movement into that body part. Just because pain is not a sensation that we're looking for in this particular class. Take two more breaths. Deep breath in, maybe scooping your shoulders up towards your ears. Exhale, shoulder blades are together and bend your back. One more deep breath in. Exhale, let it go, sigh everything out. Thank you all for tuning in and watching the video of today's Chair Yoga class. Have a great rest of your day and we'll see you back here soon. Namaste.